Hey there, welcome back to our channel. Today we're diving into an intriguing and somewhat shocking phenomenon sweeping across Europe. Power prices dropping below zero. Yes, you heard it right. This means you can use electricity totally for free while getting money from electricity producers. Have you ever thought that having too much renewable energy could actually be a problem? Sounds crazy, right? Well, stick around because today we're diving into the fascinating and unexpected world of negative power prices in Europe. Imagine being paid to use electricity. Yes, you heard that right. We're breaking down why this is happening, how it affects you, and what it means for the future of renewable energy. Trust me, you don't want to miss this eye-opening journey. Hit that like button, don't forget to subscribe and share this video, and let's now get electrified. You probably wonder why European power prices have fallen below zero for so many hours this year. Well, Europe has seen an unprecedented number of hours, 17 in the 41 to be exact, where electricity prices were negative during the first eight months of the year. And get this, in some instances, prices even slid below minus $20 per megawatt hour. It's like the market got sunburned from all the solar and wind power pouring in. Experts provided these eye-popping figures, making one thing clear. The rapid growth of renewable energy is surpassing our ability to handle the excess. But how does this even work? Let's find out. So now, how can negative power prices be both a blessing and a curse? When electricity prices plummet below zero, it essentially means consumers are getting paid to use electricity. Imagine charging your electric car or running your washing machine and getting paid to do it. Sounds dreamy, right? However, there's a flip side. This price drop can potentially undermine Europe's ambitious renewable energy projects, which are vital for achieving net zero targets. Bjarne Shieldrop, chief commodities analyst at Swedish lender SEB, nailed it by comparing it to producing too much oil, causing prices to crash. Renewable energy may be cleaner, but the economic dynamics are anything but. Can you believe how much renewable energy capacity has grown in Europe? Over the past five years, Europe's solar farm capacity has more than doubled, going from 127 gigawatts to a whopping 300 man gigawatts. Meanwhile, wind energy also saw a substantial boost, rising from 188 gig to 279 gig. These stats come courtesy of energy think tank Ember and are a testament to how far we've come in reducing fossil fuel reliance and emissions. For the first time ever, wind and solar outpaced fossil fuels in power output for the first half of this year. However, batteries and other storage solutions haven't kept pace, creating an awkward situation where producers sometimes pay consumers to use electricity. Ouch! We can now move to an important question. What's the deal with these government support schemes? Believe it or not, the very support schemes that were supposed to hasten the transition to renewables have somewhat backfired, according to experts. Experts pointed out that the hefty initial capital expenditure for solar projects means they need to keep producing to recover their investments. So here we are, basking in the sun and suffering from price cannibalization. This effect sees power prices fall when it's sunny and windy as renewables produce simultaneously. And guess what? Negative pricing hours have skyrocketed from 675 hours five years ago to 7,041 hours in the first eight months of this year. Solar energy is the main culprit, especially during those sunny months and midday peaks. Can you guess which countries have been most affected by these negative prices? Finland leads the pack, facing the most negative priced hours thanks to its massive hydro and nuclear capacity. Turning these massive plants on and off isn't as easy as flipping a switch. In contrast, Italy, which still leans heavily on gas-fired power stations, hasn't had any hours with negative pricing. The EU has ambitious solar and wind power goals to meet its climate objectives. However, ESIP's shield drop warns that without focusing on storage and flexibility, we're headed for bumpy roads ahead as prices tumble. According to energy experts, negative pricing could largely be solved by 2030. With more batteries and hydrogen producing electrolyzers on the horizon, Europe might finally find a way to balance this energy seesaw. These devices will provide extra sources of flexible demand for electricity, preventing negative pricing, 
However, researchers warn that price cannibalization will persist. Prices may not dip into negative territory, but they'll frequently plummet to zero. For renewable developers, zero or negative, it's a sticky situation either way. So how can utilities avoid such negative electricity prices? Well, energy systems can invest in grid flexibility measures such as energy storage, like batteries, that absorb excess energy during peak generation and release it when demand rises. Additionally, demand response programs can incentivize consumers to shift their energy usage to times of surplus. For instance, industrial users could be incentivized to ramp up production during these periods, while residential consumers might be encouraged to charge electric vehicles or run appliances during off-peak hours. Expanding interconnections with neighboring grids to export excess power, while improving forecasting of renewable energy production, can also help mitigate this issue. So there you have it, folks. Europe is in a fascinating yet complex spot with its renewable energy journey. As we continue to harness the power of the sun and wind, we need to think about smarter ways to store and balance this energy bounty. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more enlightening videos. See you next time.